Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming here today to visit us here at our NEON booth. We are called NEON and we are a four month old venture. We've only been around for four months and literally last September was when this team moved into our new office in the middle of nowhere. So we are not here to sell you a product. We are not ready for commercialization. You won't be seeing anything of what we're creating in the real world anytime soon. But still, we work very hard on a technology that we believe is very transformative, that can impact the world in many different ways. And so we're just very excited to be here at CES to preview to you and give you guys a glimpse of the future, something that we think is very, very important. We are making neons. Neons are artificial humans. Artificial humans are computationally generated digital beings, meaning that they exist in the digital world. They are virtual. They have no physical embodiment, they're not a robot, you can't touch it, but they're virtual and they behave just like you and me. They can smile, they can talk, they can laugh, they have expression. And the idea was to, be, the idea was to make technology more like us, to make machines more like us. I don't know if you ever been to an airport and you checked in, maybe at an airline checking counter, it's, it's a kiosk, right? And you type in your confirmation number. It's, it's, a very, it's not a very nice way of interacting with technology. But what if that machine was a human? What if that machine can talk to you and interact with you kindly, compassionately? Hello, sir. Hi, madam. How can I help you? And even when you're frustrated and worried about your delayed flight, it's kind and it's patient. But what if you go to an ATM? My mother, she hates ATMs because she doesn't know what buttons to press. She's like, what does this, this do? How do I do a withdrawal? How do I do a deposit? But if it was a neon, a person, personable interface that's able to explain to her nicely in her mother tongue and allowing her to understand how the financial transaction is happening, that's such a better way of interacting with technology. So that is the vision behind Neon. We are creating artificial humans to help us interact with technology in a much more human way possible. The technology that is driving this Neon is called 4R3. R3 stands for reality, real time, and responsive. Now this idea, the fundamental principle of this idea came from the perception of reality. Everyone here, you all know that I am real because I look real. I'm not a cartoon character, I'm not an animation, I'm not a dog or a cat, I look like a real person. I'm also moving in real time. When I shake my head, there's no lag. I'm not like a computer screen. There's no lag in any of my movement. And finally, I'm responsive. If you ask me a question, I'll answer to the best of my ability. I can respond to various interactions. So Core 3 is doing just that to the Neo. It's providing a perception of reality. And so it's the front end engine that's making these Neons real. Yes, neons are based off the model of a real person. You can't find them in real life. It's just the same way that Alexa, Siri, Bixby, Google, they're all based off of the voices of a real person. But then after that, every frame, every expression, every movement and laughter that you see these neons produce are happening in real time and it's original. That scene, that pixel, that frame has never happened before and was never recorded or imaged. Our algorithm, the core R3, is a technology that is driving each one of those sequences and those frames. And that is what's bringing this lifelike reality to life. So in the next few minutes, Michael's going to give a brief demonstration of core R3 and the technology behind it. Um, I will say one more thing. Neons do not have intellect. They don't have memories yet. And so that is something that what we're showing here with you today is something that is not ready. And later in the year, we will preview more of that technology in the back end later on. Core R3 is a front-end technology that's able to drive and bring that realism to life. So Michael, please. Thank you, Bob. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm going to walk you through some of the capabilities of our Neon. I'd like to draw your attention to the, my right side over here, where you can see Kathy. She's a yoga instructor. And Karen, she's an airline worker. And I'm just going to go ahead and see if we can connect to them. So here on the top right of the screen right now, you can see that they're in an autonomous mode, and that means they're in sort of an idle state waiting for instructions. Here on the lower right, you can see a diagram that depicts the different states that they could be in at any given time. And I've got a tablet over here, which gives me controls, and I can 
as them go into different states that you see here. So let me go ahead and check if we're connected to them. And so I'm going to ask them to freeze. Okay, connection's working. And by pressing a button, I can ask them to smile now. And I can go ahead and individually control them. So I can go up to Kathy, and she's a bit confused right now because there's so many people looking at her. And so I've asked her to go into a confused state. And I can also connect to the airline worker, and she can talk as well. Good morning. Are you having fun? And since we're at CES and everybody's pointing their cameras at them, I've asked them to go into a selfie mode where you can go ahead and take pictures. Bob, would you like to go in the picture? Yeah, I would love to. All right. And finally, we can ask them to say bye. 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 Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the internal uh, representation of what's going on here. So computers aren't necessarily intelligent, but one of the strong points is that they can compute millions of possibilities very quickly. And so here you can see all the different types of parts and ways that they can generate their movements and expressions. And now so thank you, Kathy and Karen. I'd like to draw your attention to this side of the uh, stage, where we have Monica and Maya. And we're going to go a little bit deeper now. And I want to show you some of the finer grain controls that we have on their facial expressions and the individual parts of their face. So let's go ahead and connect to Maya and check if she's you, you can see now that she's in an alive state right now. And I just want to go ahead and check if she's, she's there. Hi, Maya. And by, through the tablet interface right now, I can direct her to smile. And she, has, she, she can smile in, in different ways. And she's kind of surprised to see so many people looking at her right now. So I'm going to put her in a surprised state. Or maybe she's a bit skeptical about what's going on. And if she's not happy, I could put her in an angry state. Or show an angry expression on her face. So Maya can also talk. So I'm going to ask her to tell us a story right now. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were... And just to show you what fine level Lopsy, control we have on her face right here. now, that we're generating we this in live in real time. Underneath the root of a big I'm going to ask her to close her eyes now, while dear, she's said saying the story. One morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So I have Your a slider here on the tablet he was put that allows me to control her, now, her right eyelids. And don't go in mischief. And I can also control her eyebrows and put them up Then old Miss Rabbit down. took a basket under her umbrella and went through the wood of the baker's. She found a loaf of bread I can also and ask her to smile a little bit more. Flopsy and Mopsy she's looking a bit serious. Who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather black. Okay. Thank you, Peter, who was very naughty. Thank you. And now I'd like to draw your attention to Monica here. I just want to make sure that the connection is working. So I'll go ahead and connect to Monica. You can see that she's in a live, in an alive state right now. And let's ask her to say hello. In her, hello. In her natural voice. So I just want to show you that we can also control very finely individual parts of her face by just dragging a slider here on the tablet. Let's make her open her eyes a little bit more. And she's looking a little bit serious, so I want to give her a little bit more of a smile. Okay. 
Okay. And Monica has some, some, so apart from her natural voice, which you can hear right now. Welcome to CES. So apart from her natural voice, we can also connect her to third party services. And so let's see what she can say now. And it doesn't even have to be in English. Let's see how well she does with Korean. Or even Mandarin Chinese. Perhaps even in Hindi. Okay, so thanks for watching. We've been showing you some of the capabilities here that our neons have. And I'm just going to pass you back to Bob. Thank you, Michael. As Michael mentioned, our neons are capable of connecting to third-party services. So those audio that you hear are not generated by our algorithm. Those are third parties. So it may sound a little robotic or a little mechanical and with a little bit of lag because the internet here at CS is not that great. But that's one of the unique features about NEONs is that we're able to be open and connected. In various industries like banking or hospitality, we're able to work with partners to add domain-specific knowledge, allowing these NEONs to operate in those specific domains and work specifically in those use cases. And to conclude everything, once again, Core R3 is just a front-end engine of our NEONs. It's driving the reality in real time of these NEONs, giving you the perception of realism. It is not the intelligence. These NEONs do not have intelligence yet. We are working on that, and we call it Spectrum. We will be previewing that later this year at NEON World. So if you are interested, please subscribe to our newsletter at neon.life, or follow us on social media at neon.life. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and have a great rest of CES. Thanks.